As I am sure many of you are already aware, this weekend during the Formula E Race at Home Challenge, a story broke regarding Daniel Apt and his future at Audi Sport. I'll hold my hands up. I wasn't going to do a video. Actually, eSports isn't something I'm particularly passionate about. It's something that I don't usually follow too much. And whilst I've given it a go, I put my hands up, it's not for me. And the Formula E stuff, while it's fantastic, it's for a great cause for UNICEF. It's put out to the fans for a little bit of fun. Last weekend, it all boiled over. And the result is that Daniel Apt has lost his drive at Audi with immediate effect. And I've, I've just got to talk about it. And again, it was one of those things where, again, I, I didn't want to do a video straight away because Daniel Apt had no time to respond before the media dogs were just straight on him. And initially, I'll talk about the accident in a moment, but I just want to kind of get my thoughts out. This isn't going to be scripted, ladies and gents, so strap yourselves in. But I didn't want to do a story because Apt... I wanted to see his response and he said he was going to do it and his response video, which I will link in the description, was fantastic. It really was and I think it puts to shame a lot of the people that jumped on the story straight away and makes me even more gutted and, and kind of furious for what has happened. This is going to be a video and a story that everyone's going to have their own unique opinion on and I think it's going to all depend on your views on esports, all depend on your views, I suppose, on racing as a whole, all depend on your views as the marketability of a championship like Formula E. But what I would say is, as someone who hosts races, I, I, if you're not aware, on Twitch twice a week we do a Formula 1 2020 open lobby, and I always aim for fun. I say, look, if you want to come in and if you want to absolutely sweat it, totally fine, I'll happily join you there. But the primary focus of those races is to have a bit of fun. And as long as those who are trying to have fun don't ruin it for those who are sweating their asses off, <laughs> so to speak, that is totally fine. And we've now done 13 races, and for the most part, it's gone pretty swimmingly. For Formula E race at home, hopefully I'll have some clips up in the background for you. You'll see is it's all a little bit carnage. But if you're not aware, most of the drivers, not all, but most of them, see it as a bit of fun, and Daniel App definitely goes into that category. But then we've also got other race winners from Formula E. Mitch Evans always seems to have a bit of a laugh. Robin Frying's also. Plenty of the grid see it as a bit of a chill-out session, but primarily, and Daniel App heavily focuses on this in his video, in his response video to the situation, the primary focus of this event is to just give the fans something to watch. And this is where the big debate comes on how you view esports. Is it just a game or is it a professional race? And again, I, I kind of in this weird blend of it's a bit of both. And I I'm happy for you to view it either way. But the result of this is... Uh, let let's crack on to the story before I start blabbing on too much. So, the fifth instalment of the Race at Home Challenge in Berlin, Daniel Apt was streaming, most of the drivers do streaming while they're actually doing the event, says to a young sim racer, so while we're also having the race at home challenge, just before we have a sim racing event, just like the Formula One virtual Grand Prix that they do, Daniel App says, look, to a sim racer, not gonna mention any names, says to the sim racer, do you want to race for me? It'll be a little bit of fun, gives you an opportunity to prove yourself up against real drivers. This is all just on camera as well. This isn't hidden behind anything. Says that, gets him in, and away they go. And it's all supposed to be a bit of fun. Daniel App makes no attempt to hide it. It's supposedly gonna be for a YouTube video, and as, again, an independent content creator, I can kind of, kind of understand where he was trying to go for this, trying to prove that some of these young guys that have never really had an opportunity to drive in single-seaters can mix it with the best depending on your view on that will depend on how sensible it was to put it in an actual race at home challenge. But I can see where Apt was coming from. Would I have done it? Probably not, if, if I'm being totally honest, but I'm not a three-time Formula E race winner and someone with that big of an audience. So it, it's all very perspective based. But anyway, Daniel Apt does decide to let this sim racer do it, doesn't hide the uh, IP address of the sim racer through a, a VPN account or, or whatever. Very much open book, letting people know. 
Daniel Apt qualifies P2, or the sim racer qualifies P2, and it was only then when I think a couple of the Formula E drivers, most notably Stoffel van Zorn, Jean-Eric Verne, seemed to be noticing that Daniel Apt was, was pretty nifty around this particular circuit. I mean, he won in Berlin, couple of years ago with season four I, th I think it was first German or first person to win their home event with a home team but then goes on in the race to have a very strong race indeed leading for a stage ending up in p3 didn't do the interview at the end of the race and the camera that's supposed to be keeping an eye on Daniel was kind of blocking his face a little bit and it was all a little bit unclear with what was going on so end of the race it's discovered, a quick investigation happens by Formula E. Discovered it wasn't Daniel App driving, it was indeed this sim racer. And very quickly, Daniel App is slapped with a 10,000 euro fine, but it's not really a fine as it's going to UNICEF. The whole point of the event, or one of the aims and targets of the event, is to raise money for UNICEF. And in App's response video, he said he's more than happy to do that. And I'm, I'm sure he was, and I think Formula E took the right stance on this situation they you know it's a bit of a, a slap on the wrist you know don't do it again but we understand that you're trying to have a bit of fun you weren't there, there was no malice or ill intent behind the decision it was supposed to be again a bit of fun and to give this guy an opportunity and Audi saw it in a different view they were not happy with the situation and I think the response by a lot of mainstream media jumping on this story, focusing on the facts that Daniel Apt deliberately put someone else in that car to try and get a great result, which again depends on how you, you view the situation, but I don't believe that was the intent of putting this sim racer in the car to make Daniel Apt look particularly good. He's already proved himself in Formula E, so why would he need to do that in, in a sim race? I, I'm not quite sure about that, but anyway, that caught on. A lot of the motorsport world believed a lot of those stories and Daniel Lapp's name sadly was kind of thrown down the drain over the weekend due to this story. For Audi, as much as it's a decision I, I completely disagree with, they were kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Formula E had made their judgement, made their decision, but then the story broke even more and that can't have been doing any good for Audi marketing and the, the, just the onlook of Audi as a company, having their driver, who'd been there since the start in Formula E, doing a quote-unquote scandal like this, it, it was always going to be a difficult decision for them. But ultimately, to remove Apt from the team completely with immediate effect is just such an overreaction, in my opinion. It, it really is. Apt has been such a valuable part of that team. Like I mentioned, he's been there since day one. It took him a while to get that first win in Hong Kong. That was then stripped away and then in Mexico in season four. But he thoroughly deserved it. And he'd had an okay start to this season. And he's a brilliant driver alongside Lucas Degrassi. So for an incident this small, with Apt's response being as it was, if Daniel Apt had come out and said, yeah, look, I just wanted to get the best result, I don't care about the racing, then I maybe would have had a different stance on this. And if you haven't seen that video and you disagree with me, would recommend going over there. But I totally get if you disagree because this is such uncharted territory. We have never seen anything like any of these esports events. We saw it a few, well, I was going to say weeks ago, but who knows what weeks are anymore. Maybe even a couple of months ago, of Simon Pagano and Lando Norris in one of the IndyCar races. A very similar story. But it's one of those things that debate, is it a race? Is it serious? And I really do think it's kind of a bit of a balance between two. But when you're destroying someone's racing career away from a computer, that's too far, in my opinion. I'm kind of rambling on a little bit now, which I really don't want to do. And again, I, I don't want to talk about what's next for Audi or who's going to fill that seat because I, I don't really think that's the right thing to do at the moment because it should be Daniel Apt. And I kind of hope that in this backfire, I think that's going to be caused through all this. From what I've seen online, certainly I'm not the only one who is pretty furious with this decision from Audi. I hope they potentially reconsider. But from an Apt point of view, does he really want to go back to that after how they've kind of treated him considering the position he was in? 
I don't know. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. It's such a strange one. And I, I hope in the background throughout this video I've had clips that kind of just portray just the crazy nature of these race at home challenges. There's so many incidents that are just way over the top, so unrealistic. And it is, I, I suppose, my point of view, a bit of fun at the end of the day. But I said it right at the beginning, from my own experience from streaming, some people don't want to take it seriously, which is fine, but as long as they don't mess up for the others, which I don't think Daniel App did, it's always going to be a tricky one. I know this is going to be divisive in the comments, but I, I, I just wanted to say my piece, and I hope it's come across better than it sounded. <laughs> oh dear, I've, I've got to prepare for the fireworks. But if you are new around here, I do try my best to keep up with all Formula E news, race reviews, and whatever. And over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to try and put out a kind of schedule or at least uh, an update video on what's happening with Formula E, when it's going to return, what's going on with these race at home challenges. But I suppose that's all kind of up in the air at the moment. Today's schedule video will be out tomorrow and there'll kind of be a, a ripple effect of that. So then the next video will be pushed back a day and, and so on and so forth. But hopefully it should be all fine and good to go. And that is your lot in today's news video. Again, I'd really like to know your thoughts in the comments because I I do feel quite strongly about this, but I think I might need correcting in the comments section. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Daniel Apt, we are with you, my friend. Had, I'll just quickly throw in as well. Had an opportunity to meet him at Rome in the Romy Pre in season... Whoa, what season was Season 5, wasn't it? Season 5, Romy Pre. Great guy. Really, really nice. And I, I strongly do believe there was no ill intent behind this. And I'll leave that there and stop rambling on. Thanks, guys, for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next one.